Um, I'm Dan Tucker. I'm um, they do it last time. came into Brocade from the Viata acquisition. So we've been in Brocade for just a couple months now, and I'm just going to give you a very brief update of what we're what we're doing. Um, let's see. There should be a slide. Uh, here it is. So Viata became part of uh, Brocade on November uh, 9th of 2012, just about four months ago, and uh, Brocade is doing a lot in regard to SDN. You've heard a lot about open flow, and you're going to hear some more about that. Uh, Viata is considered to be an essential building block as part of that strategy. Having said that, uh, there's not a lot I can tell you now about what, uh, how the strategy is progressing, so hopefully sometime very soon we will give you a good update. Right now, I just wanted to remind you that we're here um, and just tell you some of the things we've been thinking about. A lot's been changing in our space. It's very dynamic, as you know. So in October, a, a paper came out that was authored uh, by about 20 <coughs> telcos uh, called Network Function Virtualization. Um, and that's something that has a lot of impact on the data centers and, and the customers that we're talking to. So there's a lot of interest in how we can use Viata within the context of Network Function Virtualization, or NFV. Um, in addition, we got a new CEO, as you're well aware, uh, just, uh, just a short while ago. So with a new CEO comes an examination of what strategies we have in place and what we can do better. Uh, chief among those, one of the first things that he said was that the action is in networking is in software. And so we're putting a new emphasis on what kinds of things we can do in software, SDN, OpenFlow, whatever way you want to look at it. Uh, Viata becomes a very uh, key building block for those kinds of strategies. We haven't figured it all out yet. It's just been a short while. So we expect to have some things to announce as we, as we get it figured out and as we develop our roadmap and make it public. Um, something you, you probably all know all about is this uh, story about daylight that came out in SDN Central just recently, talking about a uh, new approach to how you would do orchestration in a data center. And there's, you know, this is something that everybody's talking about in the industry. Um, as that starts to become uh, uh, less rumor, we can start to talk about that as well. And so we'll be able to tell you a little bit more about what we, what we think about the daylight program, if it exists. Not saying it exists. <laughs> First rule of daylight. No one talks about daylight. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hard to talk about it, but, but it is something that every vendor in the Valley is, is thinking about. <clears throat> so I'll just give you a very, very quick um, rundown of what Viata does in case you're not familiar. Uh, Viata has been downloaded over a million times. So most people in networking have downloaded it at some point and played with it and have some familiarity with the product. Some people haven't, but it, it's something that's been downloaded so much that it's become really stable well-known, it's been tested against all sorts of gear and all kinds of different networks. So it's a pretty reliable and stable platform. What it is is a single image that has a router, firewall, VPN, an adding firewall, um, that sits inside of a virtual machine. So what you can do with that is you can put routers wherever you need them in a virtualized environment. Think about an agile router as you create more, uh, as you create more tenants in a multi-tenant environment, you can create more routers with firewalls. And so you can get capacity that scales up with, uh, with the need. Uh, we think this is really exciting. Uh, one of our, our key tenants has been to make it open and multi-tenant, I'm sorry, not multi-tenant, but um, able to support uh, hypervisor environments from all the leading vendors, including, you know, of course, VMware is out there, most of our customers, but also Microsoft, Zen, KVM are coming on strong. Uh, people don't want to get locked in any given one, and we hear customers more often now saying that they have multiple hypervisors and they want the same technology that can span across hypervisors. So that's been one of the key things we've done is make it able to support any hypervisor. We also run within Amazon, and that's very exciting because now you can have hybrid clouds where you have some of your facility in a local private cloud and some of your facility in Amazon or some other public cloud, and you can use VPN technology from, uh, from Viata to connect the two together uh, using the same interface and the same kind of structure on both ends. So that's something that's, that's been generating a lot of excitement with our customers. And then we also have the ability to run on bare metal. So you can take a spare server, run Viata on it, and create a, a router for a special function uh, to fill a need. So we see customers doing that as well. And you know, the, the, um, this is my last slide. I promised I'd be brief. Um, we're seeing a lot of interest in SDN. And so what we're really seeing 
specifically, because SDN means so many different things to different people. What we're seeing specifically is multi-tenancy. And so if you remember, you know, in the early days of multi-tenancy, there were chain link fences in hosting sites and there was physical separation between tenants. And we evolved from that, we, we got to VLANs. So you have VLANs to separate tenants. But we all know VLANs don't scale enough for modern hosting sites. Um, so now we have VXLAN and other technologies loosely described as SDN. But the, the, the point of all these things is to create separate tenant spaces. Now where we fit in is within a tenant, you need strong routing, firewall, and VPN. So as you fire up a tenant, you have all this infrastructure on the outside, um, some of the products from Brocade and from a lot of vendors that create multiple tenant spaces that are independent from each other. What Viata does is gives you all the networking inside the tenant. Okay, so you can have a more complex tenant that has multiple subnets connected by a router, and the router is Viata, and it lives in a VM. So it has all the advantages and all the flexibility of any other software product, able to move around, able to scale up as you go. Uh, we, we believe you know, routing and security close to the VMs is gonna be more efficient. So if you can put a router right there in the same server with the virtual machines that are running applications, you're gonna get more efficiency. You don't have to go out onto the net and, and get the latency hits and the congestion that you get from going on the net. You can do the routing right there inside the server. Um, we see an industry movement to x86. Intel's been doing a great job of making their processors faster and faster and also putting in a lot of gadgets in the cores that are designed specifically for operating on packets. So there's a lot of network infrastructure coming from Intel within the x86 architecture. The x86 is just getting more and more and more capable. So we see a, a, a movement toward running network functionality in x86 as inevitable. Um, RESTful API is across everything we do. All of our customers want this kind of capability to be programmable and to run under orchestration. So there's a lot of work we have to do to, to fill out the picture and have all the orchestration in place uh, but we see that as, as essential to our plans going forward. Um, I think I covered everything. I think I even might have gone in less than 10 minutes. Um, but that's it. We just wanted so to let you know. I wanted to ask about, like I've been looking at the Viata products to do exactly this, the tenant routing cloud model here, which is what you're doing. So you've got the, the RESTful API for the cloud automation licensing. Do you actually have a RESTful API for licensing or a licensing server that I can use to do automated licensing data? Uh, we don't have that yet. That's something that's on the roadmap. So we don't need that. We have to just do it in different way. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Second thing is the firewall. Is the firewall certified? What sort of functionality is contained in the Viata firewall? Is it it's a staple inspection? It's is a it? staple firewall. Yeah. It's not a, a deep packet inspection firewall at this point. Yeah. That's, it's, you know, our philosophy is the firewall is not the kind that you put at the front door to your to your uh, internet facing data center, but rather it's the kind of firewall you have between subnets yep. to do fault containment, to isolate between different functionality in the data center. Okay. So it's a, it's a good staple firewall with that, but it's not application aware at this point. You probably don't want it to be fair because it burns too many CPUs. So. And memory and, and other yeah. resources as well. Uh, and the third part is you talked about the VPN capabilities. Is it IPSEC and SSL? It is exactly that. Like and full spectrum in that space, like does it do certificate and crypto key management? Can you do, I, I don't know. Do I brought my care. expert. It doesn't do PKI as yet. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's something we have to look into, uh, depending on the use case. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so key management's a key part of um, cloud automation systems. Yeah. Normally, so once we, if you're doing a pretend routing system and you're deploying an IPSEC VPN at the front end, yes, we not typically automatically generate keys, and then put another one at the other end, and all the dynamic yeah, generate the keys as part of the cloud automation. And without that, I'm kind of it's missing a key feature. That's 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 important to me. Okay, because if I'm deploying a thousand of those firewalls inside of a cloud infrastructure, I can't use pre shared you, keys. You want to do it in a more automated fashion. Yes. So we've, we've been um, offering this capability through Amazon yes. since November. Mm -hmm. And it's going well and we're getting great reception to it, but it's still kind of early days. So yeah. we have a, a, a long list of things on our plate to do. Yeah. Um, but that's well noted. Okay. Yeah. That's my problem. Keys so, are easy. Crypto keys are easy to automate. Okay. <laughs> well noted. Um, are there any other questions or comments? We just wanted to remind you that we're still here. But hopefully we'll have a lot more to share next time we get together. I do have one quick question. Um, 
are you guys going to look at doing anything in the vSwitch space, or are you just going to ride whatever else anybody has? Um, it's an open question. On, on, um, on the VMware side, they have a switch, and we interoperate with their switch very well, and there's a lot of value to being part of their solution. So where they provide the vSwitch, we pro provide the routing. It's a good, good line of demarcation. You guys if you guys go into KVM and Zen, then the answer would be different. You've done something really interesting. What you've done is you've done routing, um, firewall, and IPsec across all the platforms. And nobody has taken switching across all the platforms yet. Mm -hmm. So you guys are a step ahead in some ways, but there's no switch, so I was just curious. Interesting. Uh, we have switching capability in the product, but the, you know, the, the deployment, if you're in a, in a deployment with VMware, uh, there's good reason to let them do the switching. But if you're not in VMware, then, then it's a very interesting question. It would okay. be uh, interesting to have switching across Zen and KVM. Yeah, very good point. Thank you. Mm. At that, I'll turn it over to David Meyer. Thank you. Thank you.